Good morning, everyone. My name is Agnieszka Janacek, and I'm a founder of Renovos, a new orthopedic regenerative medicine startup from Southampton University. We've only been going for the past two years, so we're a fresh company and slightly probably left field here in this session, as we're somewhere in between medical <coughs> devices and pharmaceuticals. So we've set up the company with one mission. We would like to unlock the full potential of regenerative medicine. And regenerative medicine, so the use of stem cells and novel biomaterial technologies uh, to use and regenerate and uh, repair damaged tissue. And there is an unmet clinical need for new replacement tissue, and the market is uh, growing rapidly and is uh, evaluated at $67 billion by 2020. And this, this growth of the market can be attributed to not only more uh, aging uh, populations, but actually more younger people are active as well and need replacement tissues. So uh, we know that stem cells are activated by a variety of different molecules within the body. So in order to capture the full potential of stem cells, we need to find a way of localizing and delivering those molecules which can affect them. So the key issue in regenerative medicine that still needs to be solved is a targeted delivery of new treatments that must be retained close to the uh, site of action and released only when needed to the targeted cells. And Renovos' platform technology solves this issue using synthetic nanoclay gels. So what are those synthetic nanoclay gels? Those are uh, nanoparticles that uh, self-assemble and can uh, form injectable solutions, which upon injection uh, form a more stable gel. And this is due to tissue pH and various protein interactions. Uh, the key advantages of the nanoclay gels is that they bind and localize a variety of different factors. We've worked on different molecules, different pH, different uh, sizes, uh, proteins, uh, other small molecules, and uh, we were able to localize a variety of those agents. But the key advantage of this technology is that it retains uh, the healing agents. It doesn't release, stagger release. Its mechanism of action is based on retention. Uh, those nanoclay gels after injection, they form scaffolds which attract stem cells to migrate into. Uh, and the cells interact with the material, biodegrade it, get exposed to the factors that are encapsulated within. So the release of the delivered molecule is very specifically to the cells that interact with the material. And you can see here on the bottom uh, picture of the mouse, that's actually an injection, a subcutaneous injection of a fluorescent protein, and that's eight weeks after injection under the skin. So you can see that the protein is retained until the cells of interest would migrate into the material. So it's a very simple idea of the technology. Uh, the key advantage would be here to tame those active molecules that we don't want to be released systemically. And uh, thanks to the uh, very specific interaction of the material with the cells, we are able to reduce the effective dose <coughs> of the delivered molecule by at least an order of magnitude. So what are those nanoclay gels? So those nanoclays are used in different tablet formulations in pharmaceutical industry. There's also been used in cosmetics, but uh, we are actually pioneering the use of those injectable gels uh, for medical use at Renovos. Um, we have a small founding team. Uh, myself and James are actually present here today, so if you have any questions, you can grab us later. The technology is spun out from the University of Southampton, and the academic founder, Professor Richard Orefo, and John Dawson have been working on it for over a decade. It's been funded by uh, public funds uh, so far, and um, at the university side, uh, the technology has attracted about three million pounds of funding. Uh, the nanoclay gels are really John's uh, brainchild. He's been working on different formulations and different molecules for regenerative medicine purposes with those clays for over a decade. Uh, James is helping on the commercial side. Uh, he's got extensive experience in management and governance of uh, SMEs. I'm the um, founder, entrepreneur. Uh, my background is technical and biotech, and also for the past two years, commercial, specifically on the <coughs> Renovos uh, portfolio.
We are supported by an extensive technical team. The group we spun out from is 35 researchers, orthopedic surgeons, uh, very multidisciplinary chemists, uh, biologists. So we have an extensive expertise. We've also set up our own labs at Southampton Science Park, which we've been supported by so far. We have orthopedic commercial experts on, both, on board and uh, extensive regulatory support for both US and European markets. So what's our position now? As I mentioned, it's technology is based on uh, 10 years of research and it's been de-risked at renewables for the past two years substantially on the technical and commercial side. We have outstanding efficacy data in various preclinical non-GOP models, uh, reaching as far as uh, sheep models. Uh, we have a key patent which recently has been granted actually earlier this year in the US. Uh, we have a follow-on portfolio of patents in mind and the technology is protected by years of know-how and trade secrets. We have a clear strategy to prove the technology works uh, by encapsulating a bone morphogenetic protein which is a uh, protein that's inducing bone formation and uh, its existing market is valued of something about one billion dollars uh, at the moment. We also have initial data for cell delivery and encapsulating other agents and using other applications. So we've been funded in 2017. We've leveraged an Innovate UK grant, which helped us spin out, uh, have a clear commercial strategy, run some additional technical uh, preclinical packages. Uh, we've been also able to raise about 250k equity investment in two seed rounds. Now we're up for much larger investment that will co uh, cover our appropriate preclinical development. <coughs> so the first target, as I mentioned, would be proving that the technology works by encapsulating BMP2, which is a highly effective bone-forming protein, but uh, unfortunately very mobile uh, in the body. And when you uh, think that it's also highly active, um, there's a lot of safety concerns with its delivery. So uh, because it's short half-life, uh, we have to deliver a highly uh, a high uh, supraphysiological dose in the clinics. So it's been used since 2003 um, in the clinics, but there are serious complications because of its a short half-life and the poor localization of the current delivery method. Uh, bone actually forms outside of the skeleton, causing uh, serious complications. Uh, the high doses actually have a reverse effect and uh, lead to bone loss. And uh, you can imagine there's also soft tissue swelling uh, due to the high doses of the protein, which is not desirable. Patients have uh, problems breathing when a spinal fusion procedure is done uh, at a higher level. So in many cases still, BMP2 uh, is the only reliable option for promoting bone fusion and the market, as I mentioned before, is about $1 billion. So uh, just to give you an idea, there's 3.4 million spinal fusion procedures. That's where the protein is mostly used. It's also used in uh, TBO non-unions and other fractures that are difficult to heal. Um, Renovos provides the means to harness uh, the power of this protein for a safer and more efficient delivery at a much lower dose. So. Um, this is not quite right slide, but um, we, the, the value proposition for the first product is that uh, we will combine uh, the synthetic clay material with BMP2 in a ready syringe preloaded formulation, so ready injectable, as opposed to the current product which is implantable, has to be combined by the surgeons. So it's an easy to handle formulation, uh, minimally invasive one-time injection that would localize the protein and uh, retain at the fracture site or the site that uh, needs to promote bone fusion. Uh, it localizes the protein uh, and it only releases to the cells of interest so we are able to encapsulate at least an order of magnitude lower dose of this protein for the same efficacy. And this uh, then also reduces cost of goods and increases the safety of our approach. So it's a step change over the current uh, formulation and uh, it's a clear benefit over the, the current formulation. And you can see that basically in the orthobiologic space, BMP2 really dominates the market. It's a fifth of the entire orthobiologics market, so it's a very um, interesting uh, target to go for. Uh, 
You can see it's a, also an active space from our uh, competitors' perspective. And not only in the med tech space, uh, you can see Faring Pharmaceuticals actually acquired another small biotech working on a different BMP2 formulation. We have, however, a key advantage here. Uh, we are the only formulation that retains the protein, doesn't slow release or stagger release it. And thanks to that, we are able to encapsulate an order of magnitude lower dose for increased safety and efficacy, and it's an easy to use injectable formulation. So where are we so far? We've been supported by various business uh, incubators. And uh, as I said, our patent got granted in the US, so it's still pending in Europe. Uh, we got 200K Innovate UK grant, which helped us uh, develop our commercial strategy, regulatory and market access strategy, as well as covered our um, optimized formulation development, target product profile creation. Uh, we are now raising five million pounds, which can be tranched against certain milestones to further our regulatory market access strategy, work on follow-on products and expand our IP portfolio, but critically also sponsor the non-clinical GOP studies, toxicology and two efficacy studies in the chosen indications that will cover us both in US and Europe. Uh, at that stage with the five million uh, pounds, we would be ready for first in men trials in 2021. So uh, the technical risk of the project is low and we would risk it with the funding that we've got for the past two years. There's multiple efficacy data that we've got in relevant uh, orthopedic models. Uh, there's no direct competitors because uh, no one's utilizing the nanoclay gel technology for drug delivery or regenerative medicine purposes. The other hydrogel materials are based on release and are less effective. Ours is based on cell uptake, so it's a very specific delivery approach. Uh, we have a patent, uh, the technology is uh, protected by trade secrets and extensive know-how is surrounding it. We're also uh, making our own uh, formulations of the nanoclay, uh, which will create bespoke regulatory data sets, which is an additional buyer to FireOS. Um, it's an easy scale-up, it's a synthetic material, so there's no special developments needed. And uh, from a commercial perspective, the risk is also low because the first product will address an already existing market and uh, it's a clear technical and commercial advantage of our product. Ease of use, efficacy, safety, cost of goods, but also because our formulation is injectable as opposed to the implantable um, competitor's product, we are able to expand that market even further uh, for applications which wouldn't require an open surgery, so it could be an intra-joint uh, injection, for example. So what we're asking, again, is the five million pounds to complete our preclinical data package and be ready for first and men trials with all the necessary FDA filings. Uh, we would also like to expand our team uh, with key commercial orthopedic expertise and also uh, continue the work on uh, new applications for the clay uh, gel technology. So in comparison to various other um, similar companies at our stage, we project that at the next value inflection point, which would be before uh, the first and men trials, that would give about six to seven uh, return on investment for investors investing in this round. And uh, our aim is always to license this technology bit by bit or prepare it for a trade sale in the future. And we're already talking to some of the majors and running our studies according to their industrial protocols just to have those early discussions and be ready for a future uh, deal. So um, that's it about the technology. If you've got any more questions, uh, we're here all day today. So please feel free to ask. Thank you.